name now. No. All right. Well, I was brought up running about to Rosarte all my life here. Um, in fact, my granny and granda and my mother's side were the last folk to bide in the castle at Pitzliga across the road here. And my mother, she was born, the year they moved out, she was born in a house just across the road for I bide. And that would have been about 95 years ago now. Uh, my, my grandfather, he was grieve at the castle Ferrum, and that was their house, was the castle. But it was a pretty poor condition, and they got this new house built for the year my mother was born. After that, the, he left there and they moved to Pennon Ferrum, and my mother went, and, and her brother Geordie Gall went to Penan School, which is up at the, the at this side of Penan. They had to come right down into Penan every day for the ferrum and back up walk up a hill and down a hill every day. Well, that was my granny and granddad. And my mother said my father, mother and father, they were ferrum workers as well. He was brought up at Ardle Mains, just a few miles down the road here. He, uh, and then when he left school, he started, he worked at Ardle Mains as well until they managed to afford a place of their end down at Lanmay eh, called Bucht. And when they were there, <coughs> that's far my father met my mother. She was brought up. Or she, they had already moved. They had actually, they had already got a place of now, which when they moved to the Pen and Ferm, and they got a place of now, which was next door to Bucht's with Blue Bog. And that's far my father met my mother, next door neighbour. They got married and they moved to Quarry Burn, up at, up at, just up at Rosart, being Rosarte here. And that's far I had uh, two brothers were born before me, and then I was born at Quarry Burn in uh, 1959. Went to Rosarte Primary School for my primary education. and. Um, we got a hurl, when we was in the younger days at primary school, we got a hurl with the science teacher, Mr. Grant, for a bid doing it in Dundarg Castle. He stayed there and he picked us up every morning and took us to the school. After Rosarte school, uh, I went to the academy and then we didn't get a hurl in the mayor after that when we went to the academy to walk. We all had to walk down to Craigie Fall every morning to catch a bus and uh, uh, I have my two brothers and myself, I, oh no, oh no, my last brother, he bid it was that, my, yeah, my brother, other me and, and we went to the academy and walk it down to Cliggy Fall and, and home at night. Left school when I was 16, left school on a Friday, started work on a Monday with Davy Abernethy at Brecker Park. I uh, went to him there as second tractorman and worked for him for, oh, I would have been, would have been with Davy for about five years, five years. And I learned mayor for that, for that man, working there, than for the day of my days when I was at school, I know I learned welding, building, Engineering, all that, when I worked there. Great man. Um, I left there when I got, when I got married. The, pay, the firm work pay wasn't too good and I needed more money, so I went to Steve Adoran. Um, working with Dodd Stephen for a bird hour, um, emptying boats in a broch, Peter Heed. McDuff and something bucky. Empty and stuff like uh, first, the first boat I did was bags of slag and nearly killed me the first day. But after I got to pay, it was a, a big encouragement to go back. I thought I would never go back till again. I was asked say her next day. But after I got the money, it was, it was a great encouragement. Um, worked with him, and when I was near boats, I worked 
uh, casual with a lot of firms and they couldn't run about in the district here, like places like in the far out of the work, maybe Ladies Ford, Clint Dirty, um, uh, Towie, the Birdower, Brecker Park, worked with David, go back and worked part time with David again as well, for there was no boats working. And did quite well do that. Worked a while at that until I was 21 and then I decided to go and try my heavy goods license because there was a man next door to me here, Duncan Henderson. He uh, had a one larry. He was started floating. He came back from Africa and started up a floating business here. And he said, oh, he said, come and give me a help as well. So the day I went to do my test, when I come home, I was a larry sitting in front of the house here. We are float on it. And I says, I, and he was sitting in the house in his day here. And I said, Oh, I see you've bought another larry. Oh, no, he says, That's urine. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's urine to drive. Oh, I, I says, Well, but if it happened when I passed my test. He says, But I can't damn fine, you would pass your test. So, that was the start of my larry in days. And uh, worked part time with him, larry in as well, until we got picked up mayor work and mayor work. And then finally I'll, I stop at Dana Boats and get Larry in full time. But he wasn't so good again, but well, well, you're young and you like Larry in. So that was the start of my college days, um, when I was 21. Then I worked with Duncan right through, learned an awful lot with him as well. He was a great engineer as well. Learned an awful lot of stuff mechanic and that with him, because we did our end maintenance. And I worked with him right through until 1997, 96, uh, 97, 1997, Duncan took Newey, he, he, he took cancer and he had to stop. So, we thought, well, what are we going to do? By that time, we were up to about six lorries running the road. I said, well, what are we going to do you now? And my brother, my youngest brother, Wally, was working ways with nurses as well. So we decided, what are we going to do you now? And I said, well, let's try. We'll try and start on our own. Because we'll try and keep the business going. Which was very difficult to start with. Because we had nothing to start with. Um, it was a bit of a struggle. We got enough racket together to buy some lorries, I think we started with five and uh, we got going in July 97, that's when we started BD Brothers and BD Brothers was my brother Wally and myself and with a few, we kept on drivers that we had with Duncan and we just kind of basically just the business just rolled on for Henderson Hollage turned into BD Brothers uh, that's been going since, as I say, since 1997. So we're in 40-plus year now that I've been at this. Well, 40-plus year I've been at Larian in, in, in the float in job. Um, still, I still do a bit of a as well. I mean, I uh, still keep a pickle sheep and a pickle cattle. Merlin and the hangouts to get my wife a <laughs> um, I'm involved in a few groups. I'm in the local community council. I'm a member of it. I'm a vice chairman of the Friends of Pitsligge Castle here. And can I look after that in the Kirk as well up the road? Uh, I'm a member of the Aberdour Farmers Discussion Group, which I was a past chairman of that. Um, that's, oh, I'm also the, the, uh, in the Grampian or Buchan, Banff and Buchan Vintage Tractor and Engine Club. I'm a treasurer in that as well. Um, that's, that's really about it, really, and we, we, um, Get to get out in traps and that noon and again, and we do rallies for very for the clubs and things like that. Uh, and uh, we, the Hollis job, we do, we do pretty, basically, we'll get going nowhere in Britain, really, but 
we, we didn't like going out to Scotland too much. Uh, we did a lot of work down into the Central Belt and a lot of west coast, we did west coast, out to the various islands in the west, um, out to the March there. Um, and Orkney, we used to run into Orkney, but we've not been there for a while. But then to, uh, settling out to, out to Lewis and Tyree, Isla, places like that, out to the Marts. Um, long hours running out of there, middle of the night, hard night, a lot of night work running through the night. Um, just men, oh, cattle and sheep. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't keep pigs at all in our float, we didn't eat pigs at all, but uh, cattle and sheep. And our main job really is fat stock into slaughterhouses. That's what bread and butter really, um, that's an all year round job. Um, and the slaughterhouses, which are always getting less, so there's only one up here, well, there's one in Dingwall, and then there's Hunt, uh, Turriff, um, and then the next thing doing would be Stirling, and then, no, sorry, there's one in Perth, and then Stirling, and then one we are doing in Saltcoats direction, we are doing Highland Beach. Nay, some money of them about new days is for that use. Same as the marts. I mean, when I started 40 years ago, the amount of marts that there was, it was marts every day, it was a, a different mart over the country. But now we're down to four, I think, prim, premium marts. There's one in Caithness, one in Dingwall, Huntley, or Thainston, and Stirling, and AR, if you can far up down. But, long way apart. I mean, in the old days it was marched every 20 mile, 20, 30 mile. But nowadays it's down to just the basic big marts and all the little lads, all the little lanes have shut. Mm -hmm. But then, simply because the amount of stock as well. When I, when I start, I keep telling them, when I started here 40 years ago, if we look out our office window here, we can see the broch. And between us and the broch there was nine firms I had livestock. And now there's only one, and he has very few. Right. For sort of lorries, have you got, Joe? Oh, we're in, it's our articulated lorries nowadays, our big art Arctics. Used to be, we had, in Henderson Hollage days, I think we had at one time, we had about five rigid motors running the road, simply because of the firms that there was. But now, because we're running far out, we're running long distance work, and it's our Arctics. Um, most, of the firms, most of the firms now are accommodate bigger motors, don't I? I mean, a lot of little places have all gone there now. There's a bit of cannon. We have, if they do little wee wee places, crofts and that, we have, a, we have a, a trailer, a little trailer, we have a short trailer for on an Arctic for doing smart places. But basically, our big Big motors, aye. Big and expensive. Aye. Mm -hmm. uh, aye. Oh, we ain't getting no British make. There's no British motors now. No. Ah, uh, mainly, mainly Volvo we have. Um, although we have a Mercedes come in, I think, as well. And we have one Renault. But that's going, I think it's going to part exchange. Um, but no, no British lorries on them here. No. The floats are all made. The floats, the trailers are all made in, in, in northern England, really. Oh. Mm -hmm. They are all to come for the up. 90%, yes. Some things we can't do because of computers. Ah, these new modern lorries, like the cars, and they've all got computers in them, and some things just can't, we can't. We have, we have actually a computer for linking onto them, but some things are a bit beyond us. But 90% of the repairs are already in here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Aye. At the moment we're running six. At the moment. Yeah. Maybe even we'll increase a wee bit as it gets busier. But six at the moment. Right. Six drivers. Mm -hmm. But I've still got, well, I don't, I don't drive on MR myself because. Well, my license so well because my condition, my health condition. Mm -hmm. 
You're still here about filming, you said. Oh, I, oh I'm still, still so here about the film. Tell us something about that. No, I just, I'm just a glorified crofter on the edge of the rocks, <laughs> clinging on. <laughs> All right. Just, ah, it gets my wife a day in Larry's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. me about your father, the, the, all of these can at um, Quarry Burn and, mm -hmm. and Quarry Heed. Aye, <clears throat> aye, aye, they had my, my father at Quarry Burn and Quarry Heed and um, farmed them until he, he say, retired for there. He actually retired for there down to Barn Yards here. And I said, for he was for a good while until they sell that and moved. Doing in Terzarte, for he was off a wheel Kent down on his street and forgot about doing here. Um, and then this place had various other folks stayed here. Oh, for between him moving out and me coming back, must have been about ten years maybe. And uh, finally, I managed to buy it back again <coughs> because it was handier because the lorries were out of the yard here, they were all in this yard. It was what hand you're staying here. I bought this back and did up a house a bit and moved to here. Because when I got married, I moved to I got into I got a house for Davy Abernethy at Brecker Park. Instead, we have been there for 15 years, I think we stayed there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I just have a fetch. But quite honest, um, I didn't do the Larry so much. Knew my, my other son, Alan, he's. He's a boss. He, he tells me for the day now. <laughs> um, he he does all the organising of the the the, the lorries. Since that's and that's been happening for the last twelve years since since my wife passed away. She passed away twelve and a half year ago, and then things were really getting on top of my then because I was still doing all the organising. I was doing the fairman and the organising, and. Um, it just it was just too much, and I said the uh, loans like I guess I have two loans at bear the work with Alan and Stuart. Um, I said to them, look, this is going to change. <clears throat> I kind of keep going like this, yes, looking after your mother, Andy and the, the Larrys. So Alan and his wife Claire to go on the running. And I think it was my wife Lorna did all the paperwork here when she was alive. She did all the book work. <clears throat> and it was just, oh, without that, it was just hopeless, like, so uh, Alan and Claire took on the running of the business, basically, and Stuart, he, he's drives a lot, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, but it's a lot of other boys, it's wheeze and I, and, and, I mean, Don drives with my, he's been with my since he left school, and I think he's near 40 now, mm-hmm. Well, he was with Henderson. He was in the Glads. It was with Henderson's, and we took him on as well. Doofus, well, Kevin Duthie for Zarte, He's been ways for. He must be ways for twenty years. What a long, long term guys. Mm -hmm. I have my nephew, one of my nephew, Callum. He drives for. Us. Uh, and Tom, my last brother, Tom. He drove for me until he was not fit anymore. He was with me for about fifteen years, I think. Mm -hmm. a family thing. Ah, oh, the drivers are like family. Right. Mm-hmm.